Good evening. Today is the third day of February 2014. We are happy to have Krishnendu with us to speak about someone whom Sri Aurobindo called an extraordinary girl. There is a book by Nirod Bran with the same title and it is quite interesting reading about this very special soul. Krishnendu, welcome. How did you first meet Eshadi? Yeah, it is a very interesting event of my life. I came to Pondicherry in 1991 and a couple of years passed away and I was always wondering uh, when I'll have the greatest experiences and wonderful things here. One day in the dining room I was sitting, I remember, uh, while taking the breakfast, I was thinking, I was just praying, aspiring within me, Mother, if I could have uh, met some of the veteran old person, old sadhak of ashram with whom I could have interacted in a very, with all closeness, by which I could have uh, known a lot of things of the old days, those golden days of the ashram and I could have lived with it. So, uh, it, um, Lord was so gracious to me. Uh, it didn't take much time. Uh, probably it was month of February 1994 and uh, Darshan was approaching like this as it is. So, one of a friend from Odisha, he came, he is also a, he was also a middle-aged man and he was a good friend of mine and a very staunch devotee. Uh, he was reading at the time uh, Nirod Baran's that uh, writing about extraordinary girl in Mother India. Uh, that episode was very interesting and uh, like uh, she was uh, the heroine of his uh, episodes, uh, whatever he was writing, it was so interesting, people were liking, which I was not aware of. The friend of mine who came, he asked me, Krishnandu, that uh, do you know that uh, the article is coming out in Mother India as an extraordinary girl for a long time and I would like to meet that lady. I don't, I don't have any idea, but uh, since you are telling, okay, we'll find out, definitely. So my job was, okay, to find out who is she and uh, where she is staying and uh, to take the gentleman uh, to her house. So somehow it happened that around uh, 12 o'clock in the midday, we arrived at her house, we pressed the calling bell and uh, one old, feeble, fair lady came out and opened the door. So, when she saw us, that we have, uh, the gentleman has come, we, we explained her that we have come from Odisha and I was, I am in ashram though, but I am accompanied him, he wanted to talk to you. Uh, then I remember the moment, she was so happy, but she told, right now I cannot talk with you because I am going to take bath. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, please do come at 4 o'clock positively. So, I told, okay, the appointment is made, so we'll meet. Uh, so, she uh, told so many times that she invited again and again so many times that I too felt that I will also join. So, it happened so that we came at 4 o'clock and uh, uh, we set uh, with her. I would like to read out uh, a few things uh, that uh, how it was interesting <clears throat> that the room was uh, full of the presence of Sri and the moment I was hearing her I realized that so uh, in my life I have read the life of so many devotees, so many sadhus, sadhikas uh, their life, it was so interesting and sometime I was engrossed with their life. But I was so gracious that the first time in my life I am meeting someone that uh, in front, I mean say personally available with us, that who is a devotee and a sadhika of that kind, 
where I can quench my thirst. Mm. So, when how, we wanted, yeah. How old was she at that time? Uh, she was in her seventies. In her seventies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you met. Just seventy she would be. You yeah. sat down with her in her room. Yeah. And what happened? Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, in the room, which we have already, I will show you the photograph. As the room was, mm -hmm. as you see, it was full of the presence of Sri and the mother, which as I feel it, uh, when I go into the deeper of my consciousness, deep of my consciousness, I feel exactly that kind of joy, anand was available there in that atmosphere. So, when he spoke to her, she was happy to explain her all the memorable events of her life. And it continued for four hours. And in the very fast instance, it continued for four hours. We missed our dinner and we went on listening to her. She had a photo of Sri Krishna, she had a photo of Sri Ramakrishna, she had Srovindo's relics, Srovindo's uh, calendar, Srovindo's photo in a room, room as you relics see. Relics also. Yeah. So everything, behind everything, behind this Krishna's photo, behind Sri Ramakrishna's photo, Behind everything there was a story, there was events, there are experiences. And the moment I came to know that she, she, is, she has been hearing the voices of the Lord from the age of four. The interest, extraordinary thing is that from the age of four she has been hearing the voice of the Lord, either Sri or Sri Krishna or Sri Ramakrishna. So, I would rather say that was a confluence, confluence of the grace of three special, uh, the divine of supreme statures like uh, Sri Krishna, Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Aurobindo. So, we could be able to hear from her that day, all these, uh, her childhood events, her married life, her coming to the ashram, then finally settling down in ashram. So all these events is a very, very long story. So I have to read out step by step certain things. Then I can connect the things how it was, how it happened. So uh, the devotees, those who are uh, really feel they're, they are also in this journey of sadhana. They will really gain out of these experiences. Would you like to read a little bit now? Yeah. All right. Yes, I'll just uh, start from here. My first and immediate reaction was that so far I have read and heard many religious stories where the bhaktas were living and seeking for the divine. And that too also, I have never met or seen them in my physical eyes. But, the dead, but that day, I couldn't believe my fortune that I was meeting a bhakta in person with whom Lord has loved and lived forever. To be with such an extraordinary person for four hours must have been truly a life-changing experience. What did you feel in those four hours and what did she tell you? Certainly it was a life-changing experience for me because I have never met any person so far who has such a direct communion with the Divine. I was amazed to hear from her that she hears voice of Sri Ramakrishna, constantly hears the voice of uh, Sri, Sri Krishna and when she narrated from her childhood, from the age of four, she is hearing Sri Aurobindo. Mm. When she was 
playing she was not even conscious about what is around her and she was playing in the mud then first time she heard the voice that was of course in bengali but uh, it was like that they don't play in the mud you will get cold you will catch cold be aware of that so she was wondering where from this uh, a deep voice is yes, coming yes. is is there anyone around then she found there is no one then she realized oh someone is within me speaking and guiding that was her first experience at the job here i was torn to hear all this she has a photo of sri krishna so wonderful i was watching then she told uh, once she had been to the market in calcutta mm -hmm. uh, while uh, there was a in the market there are several shops and there was a pho uh, shops uh, photo shops mm -hmm. so they were sri krishna's photo was there she liked it very much and uh, oh, it, uh, on the way itself when she was passing through that that photo attracted her hmm. she went inside that uh, shop and uh, what happened to her she purchased that then she brought it and kept it in the house some other person liked the photo and they wanted to have also similar kind of photo from that market the next in uh, couple of days they have gone again to that uh, shop and they found they found the first that shop is not there and uh, she was surprised when she narrated me i was really exclaimed that how it happened similarly there is a sri ram krishna paramahansa photo she had a such a good experience i asked where from this photo she told there is a small story behind it one of her friend who painted sri ram krishna's photo brought it to her a uh, lot of quite a few great personalities photos also then then she liked the sri ram krishna's photo in particular at that period she asked that the cost of that would be 300 rupees so she told uh, i can afford it then she prayed uh, sri ram krishna mm. that i liked this photo Uh, the painting, painting, but it is uh, so costly. She is telling. It happened so that uh, the lady came back uh, and told that I had a dream that uh, Sri Ram Krishna told to give this photo to you. And uh, she told I I am ready to offer hundred rupees. She offered. Then later on, after some time, the lady again came back. So I feel guilty that hereafter. I'll never charge any price for this kind of painting, which is being liked by the by his devotees. So, from her childhood, she used to read Mahabharat, uh, Bhagavat, Sri Ram Krishna's Kathamrita, because, as she told, she was not fond of studies, but she was fond of reading all these scriptures, and when she reads this scripture. she has continuously several experiences in her life i was hearing all those one after another that how in different events in different time uh, she has got all these experiences so in that 4 hours she told you about some of her experiences with these paintings What did she tell you about Sri Aurobindo and Mother? Yes, she started coming since 1930. Dilip Kumar Rai was her uncle, maternal uncle. Oh. She hailed from a great family, uh, Surendranath Banerjee from his uh, paternal side, and Dijendralal Rai. from the maternal side so dilip rai was her uncle dilip rai at that time was already as an astromite mm -hmm. so she was only 5 years old so she their parents decided to come uh, to pondicherry to meet mr dilip rai so in 
she got a chance come first to come first time to ashram so they were from a high family so room was arranged in a place a separate house was arranged and as she remembered she told me it would be the present shrub in the society beach office mm. so there there a house was given Uh, uh, that uh, she came along with a companion of her called Manu, and a small pet dog also. So with all these, uh, they stayed uh, there in that house. A room was taken with all the permission of Mother and Shrovinda. It was given. So uncle was there, and mother came in the afternoon to see them. So. I uh, will tell you in uh, due course. Uh, actually, uh, her father was uh, actually an atheist. He do he doesn't believe much in the God. As a part of Sri Ravindra's opinion also. But uh, that day when the mother came, she has a very fine. Uh, uh, I mean, it's a very sweet behavior. He vented uh, upon mother. then um, her mother also maya devi father was bhava shankar banerji uh, and mother uh, the moment mother came to that their room the dog immediately scenerated me that dog immediately jumped over mother's lap and uh, uh, mother petted uh, that and mother told that how sweet is this dog then later on they had a conversation for some time that parents and mother she was a child of 5 years old only then they started meditation when the meditation was taking place everyone had closed their eyes and it was quite silent so she was sitting somewhere because the children are not allowed for meditation but uh, she came with the tip to uh, forward uh -huh. that to see what is happening curiously Then, then she found that mother is noticing it, and uh, she was that everyone is meditating silently. What is going on? But mother is mother eyes were open all around, and she was. And then mother narrated afterwards that though we didn't allow her for meditation, but she was already here. Well, and then after a couple of months, their parents uh, got the permission for darshan, August darshan. and they had the darshan but this child because she was only 5 years old she was too young to too young she was not allowed yes so she was sitting near the samadhi so near the samadhi there was a small pond so like a playing playful child she was throwing stones inside the pond and uh, just uh, talking uh, with her friends and some of her relatives were also around then all of a sudden she found that upstairs windows was opened and some bearded old man is watching her so first she thought she looked at slowly then she first she thought that probably it is champaklal uh, but uh, by the side of her there were uh, her relatives they immediately exclaimed that uh, with a devotion of shrobindo's appearance then she found that mother joined uh, him and with he was such a smiling environment he has spread it was enveloping both mother and shobindo's and smile enveloped her completely because their focus was completely towards her so they watched intently uh, to her and uh, by watching her she was only 5 years old but she just uh, folded her hands and bowed down and offered pranam to both of them then after few minutes that was around 5 minutes around uh, shrub in the watched and madhura jalam with him then they closed the till they closed the windows she was waiting then later on the relative told it was shrub in the and the mother now so we, actually we... what i felt it is actually not that she saw first time shrub in it is shrub in the who saw her first time so that was a great privilege that it is uh, if i am not mistaking it is uh, 1930 or 32 that was the first event when she saw because she came after 30 she came in 32 she came in 34 36 38 
Así que we have heard from many people that Sri Aurobindo never smiled. This is the first time we have heard that he smiled at this child. Yeah, not only that, uh, Sri Aurobindo also wrote letters uh, to her when she was at the age of uh, six. Mother and Sri Aurobindo started writing letters to her. She used to stay here uh, different times with uh, Jyotirmai. Jyotirmai was Niruddha's niece. Mm -hmm. So along with her, she used to stay also. And time to time the correspondence started. But when the correspondence started, do you, do you like to know that event? Certainly. But I first want to ask you one thing. Please, please. When did she first have his darshan? At what age? Excellent. That is at the age of nine. In 1934, she was allowed for darshan. Even though she was a, still she was a child, mm -hmm. her friend was there. The same Manu, the companion, was there. Because they were rich people, so they used to bring whatever, I mean, say whatever way the child like, the parents used to provide. So she dressed herself with a sari uh, and uh, whatever the ornaments that time. So she tried to put a tiara, that is a kind of ornament yes. on the mm -hmm. forehead. But uh, the Maya Devi, her mother, uh, was uh, decorating her for darshan. Then this another Manu, she cried, she wanted that tiara. Then uh, Maya Devi gave that tiara to that girl, that Manu. Mm -hmm. So she was not happy, Asa was not happy. She cried. So she went with a swollen eyes only with sari and other dresses, nine years old, to meet Sri Aurobindo. That is, you can say, first time the darshan, as you have asked. So on the queue, she saw Sri Aurobindo and Sri Aurobindo saw her also. Then later on, uh, after darshan, Sri Aurobindo asked Dilip Rai whether why her eyes were swollen, why she was sad. Then Dilip Rai told, uh, Sri that uh, she couldn't be able to put that uh, ornament on her forehead, so she was not happy to come and see you without that. Sri Vindu told, tell her that without that also, she was look, looking quite pretty. So this young girl of nine years old, so much deeply impressed with these words of Sri Vindu, that she started writing Sri the very next moment, immediately, that uh, Ogo Amar Sri You know, the Ogo word is used uh, in a very rare cases in Bengali. So, that is uh, not allowed, you cannot use Ogo to everyone. And what does it mean? Ogo means my dear, my dearest. My dearest. So, my dearest you cannot uh, tell to everyone. Yeah. That is normally goes uh, in a different context. So Dilip Rai, uh, everyone knows about Dilip Rai, how close he was with Sri Aurobindo. So he immediately was against this, that uh, how can you write, you are a small child, immature, and how can you write like this, say, Ogo? Mm. I want to say, my dearest, how can you write to Sri Aurobindo of such a personality? Then, uh, of course, she was offset again, but uh, Nolinida interfered. That is what she was telling me, another uncle, I hope it is Nalnita. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Nalnita told, why you are interfering in between her and Sri Aurobindo? Well, he told, delete this. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Told, uh, leave it to Sri Aurobindo. Let him decide whether he likes or he doesn't like. Then she, then the letter went to Sri Aurobindo. And Sri Aurobindo replied, happily, without making any fuss on it. Then she found it interesting. Well, then she wrote immediately again to Sri Aurobindo, look, uh, my uncle is always reading whatever I am writing and whatever you are answering. Can you please do one thing? Next time when you write, we write two letters. <laughs> one privately in between you and me and another for my uncle, which my uncle can read. Wonderful. 
<laughs> and Sri Aurobindo complied it. She was telling me in one occasion when she was uh, still smaller than below nine, she came inside ashram and uh, plucked a flower. The gardener who was there inside shouted. Uh, so she ran home sobbing. Then it uh, came to the knowledge of mother, immediately mother heard about it. I hope Sri was, when she was narrating me, I think Sri Aurobindo also heard it. Then immediately, Sri Aurobindo, who is that crying? Then I told her that uh, girl called Esa has come. Then the reply was given to gardener that hereafter, whatever she like, she can do. Don't stop her. So such a special treatment was given, yeah. which continued uh, all the time. She came even uh, 1938, some 1938 when she was uh, 13 years old, some incidents happened, she had to go back. So these are, uh, these are each event is, will take uh, some time to narrate. It's fine, fine. Uh, but uh, even 1949 when she is coming back in November Darshan, after her marriage and long gap from the age of 13 to say 25 because she took birth in 1925 or mm -hmm. 10th October. So sometime in 1949 when she was coming back. Such a special arrangement was always uh, for her. I mean say you will slowly slowly will you will be able to know that what is the reason behind it. Uh, how it happened and what a kind of uh, devotee she was or what a kind of disciple she was. Nalinda was going by car to receive her from the station and um, around 25 letters Mother and Sri Aurobindo has written to her and she was the first girl to whom Sri Aurobindo written the letters in Bengali, first child, I, I mean it's the first child um, from let's say seven years old child so he used to write uh, the letters. Krishna did Please. she ever tell you what her experience was when she went before Sri Aurobindo in the darshan, or mother in Sri Aurobindo. Darshan, the first darshan when she had. Mm -hmm. uh, different occasions she has explained uh, to me that uh, what are the experiences she had. Uh, the first time uh, when Sri Aurobindo saw her, Mm -hmm. She told it was such a joyous smile Sri expressed that it is as if the whole world has enveloped her. Uh, the first time, such a joyous. Uh, then in, even in uh, 1949, when she was quite uh, adult, I mean she was 25 years old, when she was passing in the Darshan queue, mm -hmm. uh, Sri Aurobindo especially looked her intently and it was so powerful, the gauge was so powerful that she was narrating that she couldn't able to bear it and she was feeling from inside, oh I can't bear it. Then immediately Sri Aurobindo dropped her uh, look, dropped his gaze, yeah. dropped his gaze. Yeah. Uh, the power was so intense always. Now she as I understand, went through many difficulties in her life, many challenges, many painful experiences also. Yes, yeah, Sri Aurobindo told once that uh, she needs to have some uh, experiences which her vital wanted. Ah. The interesting part of her life is uh, if we if we, if we go through in detail her experiences mm -hmm. from the age of seven, I mean say six you can say, five, six she came here, the mm -hmm. moment, the day from which uh, yes. she kept her relation with uh, modern Sri in writing as well as in conversation. Uh, from that period to the, till the age of 87, it has gone like as if everything was pre-designed from her previous karmas as if she was getting all the results of her previous sadhanas. When I was observing her talks, mm -hmm. when I uh, experienced a lot of things when I was with her, I have seen that all she has 
uh, it was prearranged. I mean, she, she deserves it. Uh, I will uh, tell you one thing. For example, mm -hmm. a small event. To once we are going, once we are going to Sri Jagannath. It happened so. I'll narrate all this in detail, but I'll mm -hmm. briefly I'll tell you why I want to mention this. So, uh, before going to Jagannath, we were staying in uh, um, Chennai. Uh, that day we went to Sri Ramakrishna, that mot is there in Mailapur, we went there. There one, uh, in Sri Ramakrishna's, uh, that campus, there is a statue. In that statue, one sadhak of uh, Sri Ramakrishna's descendant, that is, uh, he was in a staunch manner, he was sitting in a very ascetic manner and doing tapasya, mm -hmm. that statue is there. So she was thinking, that uh, what a staunch uh, tapasya, ardent uh, devotion and tapasya is doing, uh, quite uh, arduous ascetic must mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't able to do in my life, and uh, he must he was got everything in his life. Then immediately the voice came. You don't have to do the sadhana in this way. You have done already. Now you get the results. So when we went um, Sri Jagannath, many many things happened. It is all prearranged by Sri in those things. So she has heard a lot of things. I'll in one one topic I'll tell these things elaborately. That how this is, how we went to uh, see Sri Jagannath, and uh, what is that context decided actually why she has to go. So all these I will uh, tell in different context. Tell me, what did she tell you about mother? Now we've talked a lot, you've talked a lot about her and Sri Aurobindo. What about Ish and mother? She, when she was a child, uh, her companion will ask that, uh, why were not allowed for meditation? So she was very five years old, and she will tell, see the Divine Mother is Bhagavati. She doesn't have to remain in her body. So she flies, she goes uh, to the sky, uh, because she is Bhagavati, the Divine Mother. So when she was not aware of anything, spontaneously uh, from her psychic, she knows that uh, she is Divine Mother. Then in her birth date, 1932, when she was seven, she got a first chance to celebrate her birthday with the mother. That was Monday. Normally, Monday mother washes her dresses, so she doesn't come down in the morning to meditation hall. Uh, but even then, because uh, the first time she was explaining me, the first time in 1932, the first darshan when she was allowed, so went, she went straight to the mother and spent two hours and mother spent her time with her giving chocolates, showing paintings, telling stories in English. So all these things, two hours she was telling me that mother was so loving towards her, so loving and two hours she knows how to entertain a child and she gave everything what she deserves at the age of seven, which is incalculable, she has never imagined. And she fell in love with so much with the modern Shubhinda's love, she never wanted to go back. And uh, it happened so at the age of 13, she decided that uh, I don't want to go, I want to be an astromite. So mother asked that uh, uh, if, you, if your mother hears, at the time she was alone, mm -hmm. Uh, I will I will again bring back the topic afterwards, but okay. but I will tell you what happened at the time. The mother asked that if your mother comes to know that you want to stay here and you don't want to go anymore, so your mother will commit suicide. What do you think? She told, it doesn't matter to me. The mother told, okay, let her stay. My goodness. Then afterwards, uh, she was staying with a lady, Jyotirmaya, as I told. 
The Jyotirmai, when heard about it, she told it is better you inform your mother that you are going to stay here. But mother is told, don't inform to your mother. But she, according to Jyotirmai's words, she sent a letter and her mother was informed and mother came suddenly, immediately arrived and wanted to take back her. And uh, it was so difficult. Then um, she doesn't want to go in spite of that. Seven-year-old child? Yeah. Uh, no, no, she was 13 years. 13, 13 sorry, years. Sorry, it is in 1938. She's 13 now. Okay. Then um, again Nolnida came to bridge the uh, issue. Mm -hmm. Actually, what has happened? Uh, uh, Dilip Rai asked the question, do you know anything about Srivindas Yoga? Don't know. Then why do you want to stay? Because I love Srivindas. Mother told that's enough. So she stayed? Yeah, she stayed, but there was uh, some other incidents, uh, which is not very interesting. She mm -hmm. had to go back. And then when did she come back permanently? Uh, she... Thirty-eight, she went back. She was forced to take him back. That was a turning point mm -hmm. of her life. If she would have stayed here, she would have been a continuously a sadhika and she would have attained a spiritual attainment would have been different in her life. Because she has always loved Mother and Shubhindu very much. And all her correspondence, even though she was a child, all her correspondence, she was always asking the questions about sadhana, how to concentrate uh, more on modern Shubhindo, how to see them, all these were there. But uh, unfortunately, uh, there was a occult reason that she has to take some vital experiences. The incident happened in such a manner uh, with her mm -hmm. that she was forced to go back. And she came back after 1938, again in 1949, when she was already married and blessed with a child. And... Uh, uh, in 1949, she made the darshan in November, then she stayed up to February of 1950. So then again, there was a gap. Uh, she came back in 1978, when she already gathered all the experiences of material life, yes. fed up. And uh, though even then, she has never lived for a single day without a modern show in those experiences or voice or this, that. But 1978, when she came back, she was she had hardly any place to stay. This that, but Shrivindo, how it is, how Shrivindo has Lord has helped. That is very interesting. I think in 1984, she stayed permanent, got a house to stay permanently, and continued from 1984 to February 2013. But Shrivindo, I remember once in my with me there was an acquaintance. We were just fixing a bulb. Uh, in the staircase, there was a problem. And uh, uh, she was asking that how long we have to take a pain like this. Then Shuvindu told you are going to stay 18 years in this house. So exactly I was watching, let me see how it's going to happen. And it has happened and she stayed in that house around 1984. And 2002 around she was shifted to care. I was wondering where she is going to go after 18 years. Yes, yes. 84 to this. But it happened so in 19, no, 2001, there was an event, she fell down, there was a small accident. She was brought to the world care. Then I think after that she was taken to the care. Uh, it will take a long, long conversation actually, the jo because the joy which I got being with her, and uh, he, listening her and uh, moving around because we used to come one day on Wednesday to meet Niruddha. I used to bring her. Oh. And uh, one day on Friday, Niruddha used to come to hear from her. If Niruddha has whatever the question, he used to put uh, her. And uh, I hardly have put any personal questions of mine ever, but spontaneously, Shrovindo. Uh, Sri Krishna had mentioned whenever it is required what is what. So I had gained a lot uh, through her. Uh, probably my spiritual life streamlined because of her. 
because uh, the whatever the quest i had in my life um, from my childhood whenever i was reading a mahatmas or devotee's life when i was reading in the book i was crying so i was always uh, feeling that when my life is going to build up in that manner or um, how i am going to have really i have such a material attraction uh, with the whole world i love the whole world but how in that uh, variations in that contradiction how a spiritual life is going to build up within me though i have it such a tremendous quest for the divine so it is the divine grace how shrivind brought me to her that shrivind has told later on then um, how i am supposed to help her in her day to day life uh, not materially much but to support her because uh, niruddha was growing old at that time so uh, niruddha used to look after her from that 78 when she came back then 84 she settled so all these days nalini then niruddha helped and niruddha very closely helped her very closely because of shrivind as a i mean say as a representative you can say yes. and uh, she used to adore uh, niruddha uh, like a elder elderly person like a father which was being uh, many many years back a astrologer has predicted that someone will looked after you in your old days or in your requ- required days who has served the divine uh, for 12 years that was also predicted and it happened he was she was wondering who is that and who is who who is who is also loving you a lot from his childhood because niruddha has also met through dilipda dilip rai uh, in her childhood in her house because all of them were studying together in edinburgh yeah. ah. in mm-hmm. london yes. well this has been a wonderful wonderful meeting with you we thank you so much sir for joining us and look forward to the next session with you will i too also as soon as possible okay okay very nice there are many more things to uh, talk about wonderful it will be very useful for the devotees definitely thank you